I'm so proud of how cool this turned out and I learned a lot along the way of making it while I was traveling. So if you want to see what it looks like and get a couple cool tips and tricks, then keep watching. I had such an incredible time in Philadelphia this past month, but one of the highlights of it was really working on developing a process to create a travel journal while I'm traveling that really works for my style and also the amount of attention I have to give to the project while I'm traveling. And this time I was able to finish a whole travel notebook. I don't know about you guys, but I have so many unfinished notebooks and this time I was able to actually get this one done and I'm so proud of it. So I can't wait to show you what it looks like and give you a little details as to how I put it together. That day when we did not exchange our hellos I wasn't looking out for you I'm sorry, I'm so shallow But I'm still looking forward to watching part two of Deathly Hallows Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'd really appreciate if you would consider becoming a subscriber. My channel is really new and I am trying to find my peeps. So if you are into stationary art and um, journaling and planning, then please um, join. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. So I am one week past um, a fabulous vacation and bachelorette party celebrating my best friend Natasha uh, in Philadelphia. And um, quick backstory, my best friend and I met when we were in Teach for America in Philadelphia. And so for her bachelorette party, we decided to um, make it basically all about us. And we went back to um, where our friendship began and did all the things that we used to love doing. So I made this um, art journal partially while I was there and then finished it up when I got home. Um, so before I jump into the finished product, I'll just quickly show you what I brought with me. I went up a day early and um, I went to a art store called Amoy Zaka and I did a whole video on everything I got there, but um, it was like really, really exciting. I'd been wanting to go for over a year now. And so it all just worked out perfectly. So I knew I was going to really um, bring a lot of planner stuff with me. I brought my main traveler's notebook planner and I also brought um, my traveler's notebook that I call my art journal. So this is not set up exactly how it was there, but pretty much it is. I have a new um, insert now that we moved into October. Um, but I had this back here and I had, let's see um some watercolor pencils and a couple uh brush pens i bought this while i was there because i've lost my other one and then also i had a water brush with me and the reason that i'm showing this and why it's important is because you'll see when i go on trips i've done i've taken every single approach there is i've taken basically an entire suitcase of art supplies and then i've taken a, a pretty pared down thing and i've even done one trip where i basically took one watercolor pencil one um platinum carbon pen and one little um accordion notebook and i made that work and it turned out to be a really beautiful um album. But this time what I did is I took essentially a handful of colors that would all go. I prepped some things that would all also complement my sort of theme and color scheme that I was going for, which you'll see in a minute. And I sort of had a, let's call it a, a little pre-made kit. Okay. So this is a traveler's notebook accordion um, album. So the pages are all connected and they come out in a sort of zigzag fashion. And before I left, I essentially decided on a color scheme and I 
pre-painted the backgrounds. So I like a lot of color. I like abstract sort of art. I love splatters. And my go-to colors are almost always um, turquoise, teals, mints, and then a little bit of purple and fuchsia, and typically a pop of an, a more um, neon sort of color. It's usually like this lime green type color and um, bright pink. So, I mean, this is literally the stuff that's just sitting around because that's what I use all the time and what I grab for. Um, so that said, I had already, and um, I'll see if I can insert some, a picture or footage of the, the pre-made pages before I added anything, but it was just, um, it was these, you'll, what you see in the background, sort of um, dry type brush strokes and lots of splatters. And I think for me and the way that I like to work, it's, um, it just, it, it lets you sort of jump in, not have the blank page, you know, not have that sort of um, stress that people, you know, some, sometimes associate with a new album. And so that worked really well. So um, from there, I had also added, you can see in the background here, this texture. Um, I have a video up of it. I'll try to link that. But essentially, I was testing this because it was, this accordion was brand new to me. I tested um, how it took the watercolor. And although this is not watercolor paper, I was pretty impressed with it. So I'll link that video where I just got these accordion albums and I was laying down watercolor and testing some techniques and such to see how the paper held up. So I went to Philadelphia with a essentially base layer because I didn't want to travel with watercolors. Um, and then just that little kit of pre-made little bits and the colored pencils and such. So here's the um, cover. Um, I kind of, there was a lot going on. So I picked to write Philadelphia in that neon lime kind of color. And it sort of fades in a little bit, but I like it. Um, I wanted it to sort of just the whole effect to be big. And I left the blank back blank. Um, I think it's so beautiful and I didn't, I didn't want to put anything over it. But of course I could have if I ran out of space. The first page I made was this page, and um, my idea was to have very scripty, what's called open shaded script, and I've taken many, many classes with an incredible calligrapher called Ann Elser, and I will um, definitely link her on, on my Instagram page. She is amazing, and she works... Um, and she, she works with many different uh, tools, but she really loves watercolor pencils and she got me into them. So um, they're just so versatile and you could do so much with them. But I wanted to do very scripty sort of titles and then use primarily watercolor pencil, uh, excuse me, primarily fountain pens to do, um, to, you know, to write um, commentary and little stories and such. So here's me getting to the airport and some little bits from traveling. And I was so excited. I, mean, I was honestly just so excited to be back in Philadelphia. I hadn't been for at least a decade. Um, and then here's me going to Amoy uh, Zaka for the first time. And you guys, I, <laughs> there I am. I was so excited to go to the shop. So I literally got in a cab, uh, an Uber, went to the hotel and left my bags, like checked them at the front desk and got back into the Uber and went straight to the store. I was so excited. And they are a partner shop with Traveler's Company. So they have their own stamps and their stamp has a water ice and a pretzel on it. And it's so cute. I was so excited. I got a bunch of these. Um, so I actually picked up these tags in Philly at another stationery store and use those and I thought they complemented the book really well. And then I put a little bit back here um, to add some journaling. Then my sister got into town and we also dropped her bags and then we went to one of my favorite restaurants in the UPenn area. It's essentially attached to UPenn's campus called Pod. Um, so something else you have to know in order to understand this whole trip is that uh, my best friend Natasha and I were obsessed with a restaurateur in Philadelphia named Steven Starr. And we were teachers when we lived there. So um, 
some of the restaurants we could afford to go to, but many of them we could not. And um, so one of the points of this trip was to go to some of the more expensive restaurants that were sort of a stretch for us when we um, were teachers in the city. But um, I added the card here and I love keeping receipts. I like looking back. First of all, it itemizes everything you had. Um, and secondly, um, it's always interesting to look at prices down the road because, you know, we always think things are so expensive, but then at some point in the future, you'll think, oh, wow, that wasn't so bad compared to today. So that night we went to a newer Steven Star restaurant called The Love, and that was definitely the best um, restaurant that I, I think we went to. It was truly incredible, um, had an amazing time. So here we are standing out in front of the restaurant. And the next morning we went to La Colombe, which you may be familiar with. They are a nationally distributed coffee brand, but the original is in um, Fishtown in Philly, which is like a, a Northern neighborhood. And then that morning was just so beautiful. So I live in South Florida and the fall was like on full uh, display that morning. We went to Rittenhouse Square, which is a lovely park in the middle of the city, downtown, and we just sat and talked and just took in uh, fall in the city. Friday, the other girls got in, got into our Airbnb house, and we went to Elvez, which is one of the um, really fun Steven Star restaurants that's very heavily themed, and it um, the cuisine is mostly like Mexican uh, inspired. And um, so we had a really great time there. And a funny little story, my um, Natasha, um, we had a pitcher of frozen margaritas, like slushy kind of margarita. And um, she went to go pour it out and it spilled all over. And it was um, very funny. So anyways, um, we had a great night that night. This is a picture of me at the the first hotel that me and my sister and Natasha stayed at, and it was so beautiful. They had this gorgeous, um, I don't know if you can see it, but calligraphy type wallpaper, lettering wallpaper everywhere, and um, it was very, very me. So here I am being silly at the airport um, on the way home, and here's another one of those little bits that's tucked in here just for additional um, journaling. I really love my journals and scrapbooks and everything to be very interactive. That's why over time I've gravitated towards the accordion because I just think like you, you were, you know, really interacting with it and um, you're flipping through it and finding little things. And so I like to hide stuff like that because sometimes I want the picture or the, the um, sort of items on the page to speak for themselves and I like the journaling to be tucked away. Um, I think this is Saturday morning or maybe it was early Sunday morning. This is a sort of a hodgepodge of things on this page but that morning um, we, me, my sister and Natasha woke up a little earlier than the other girls and we went to a little cafe um, and got coffee and I got a London Fog and here's the little tea tags that came on that. I loved keeping those. Um, here's some of the different food that we got throughout the weekend that I highlighted. Okay, so here she is, the bride-to-be. I had to have, of course, a picture for her. And on Saturday night, she wore, it doesn't show up in this photo really well, but she wore this very sparkly um, jumpsuit outfit that was so cool. And then I got her this headband that said bride across the top in beads. Um, big sparkly beads and it had a veil on it and she looked so amazing. So I had to capture that moment. Um, on Saturday morning, we went to Reading Terminal and um, just that's, if you are ever in Philly and you have not been, Reading Terminal is the first place I recommend to everybody. Um, it's essentially a food market and it's a food market before that was like a real concept, I think, today, or at least before, you know, the modern idea of a food market. But um, we got a whole bunch of different things and everybody tried everything and it was just so much fun. Um, so this page is just about me and my best friend and we call each other Ebony and Ivory or Eb and Ive. And um, I was just sort of, I made this when I got home and was just thinking about how lucky I am to have met someone so long ago and, um, you know, just to be so close um, at this point in our lives. 
and um, this was the last brunch we had at this really incredible little brunch spot in Northern Liberties. And um, again, we were sort of reminiscing about how um, those areas, um, you know, what we used to go there for when we were young, which was always brunch. So we had our last brunch there uh, in the Northern Liberties area. And um, this spot was amazing. The food was incredible. And then in the um, airport, I got a flight of wine at um, Vino Volo. I just hung out. I did some more, you know, catch up, etc. Uh, so that is the book. And I did basically all of this, all of the front pages I did while I was there. Um, just... Uh, I'm the only one of the group that has kids, so I'm the only one that was trained to wake up early. Everyone else slept in. I did try to sleep in, but I couldn't, so I woke up early each morning, and I did a little bit. So I probably did a total of three hours between mornings and coffee shops and the airport, and then I finished up the rest of the pages here at home. Um, so honestly adding the background just makes the process so much easier and deciding in advance what your palette is going to be. For me, I like things to be more cohesive. They're not always going to be perfect, but um, I like when they're a little more um, cohesive because it takes a lot of the guesswork out for me. Um, so as I said, I came with a notebook that was already um, had a background on it. I came with pre-cut up um, or in this case, ripped up pieces of backgrounds that I knew were going to fit on the um, behind the photos. So I came with my Kodak Mini and um, so I made those. I came with washi tape that would complement everything. And then, you know, just a small little kit of bits, but everything else I collected while I was there and um, you know, just made it work. I really love this piece. First of all, I love the textured watercolor here. And then um, I found this postcard and it had this just uh, simple lined illustration. And then I put a couple pieces of vellum. And so you see that kind of behind it. Um, I, I really like that piece. So I think it really came together well. I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, and I'd like to know, you know, how you approach art journaling when you're traveling, do you prep like I try to do or do you just go and see um, what comes of you? I will tell you, I've been very inspired by um, Jane the Crazy. Uh, she's on Instagram and on YouTube. She has really awesome videos. And um, so I really love her style and just how bright and cheerful it is. And um, it's she's very free with her uh, the way she approaches her journaling. So I've been very inspired by her and uh, check her out if you haven't and you need some inspiration to jump into one of these. And um, so thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a whole video on the Amoy Zaka haul I got at that uh, incredible stationery shop. I will tag that. And then um, that's when I, like I said, that's when I show you where I first applied watercolor to this to see how it turned out. So if you're interested in that, go check out that video. And again, guys, please um, like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And um, if you're into stationary watercolor and you know just fun stuff like this then um you are in the right place have a good one bye guys